everybody. You know, it's your old pal, Ron Howard. I am in Salt Lake City, and my good friend, Michael Downey, some of you know him as RGB Man, uh, was gracious enough to pick me up from the airport after walking two miles to get my luggage. And uh, That's so true. Has, uh, we've dropped things off in the room, and we've been catching up and chit-chatting. And I've never been afraid to ask Mike tough questions, and Mike's never been afraid to answer tough questions. And I thought, you know, Mike, let's, let's, let's put together a little tape little video and see what's going on where you're at and address some of the issues that people and groups may have with you. First of all, just where, what's going on today with you and your business? Well, last couple of years have been kind of rough just because of a lot of surgeries and everything. But, but uh, uh, actually, the business has been going fine. You know, it, it's, it's uh, steady. Uh, we talked about the first couple of months of this year have been slow for everybody, but other than that, it's you know it's just been kind of a steady flow of of customers coming in and getting stuff out. Sure. Now I'm in a lot of the groups, and you yeah. and I have a lot of history. It goes back eight well, years. Oh yeah, it goes back a while. Yeah, we were both admins <laughs> of the think tank, and I brought you to the think tank and yeah. because I really thought that you had a, a, a an even mind, were very impartial. Just try, a, try to just, be just a good guy. So. You were sort of like the man when it came to selling pixels at the for the DIYers and some commercial stuff. You had pixels in stock. You made a really remarkable name for yourself. You know what happened basically was is that is that uh, uh, one of the Chinese vendors uh, came to me and said they had some pixels that somebody had ghosted them on. And uh, and I'd been buying from them for the last couple of years, doing what we all do, right? We we uh, we want to have a show, and asked me if I could sell them for them. And <laughs> so I I picked a price point and sold them, which kind of upset the three major people that were selling pixels at that time. That was not my intent, by the way, but it, it but I could see now why it was really obvious, and it really blew up into something very large because before we started doing it. Pixels were anywhere with, including shipping. You you would order them in January uh, or February, and they'd come in sometime around September because they were doing a huge pre-sale. And uh, and what they did was is is then they would send you the shipping cost after mm -hmm. your order was made and until you until you paid that. And so it usually came out to around fifty to seventy five cents, depending upon who what the vendor was, or maybe one vendor was around a dollar, but we won't talk about that. And uh, and uh, so uh, it started to fly, and I was shocked, honestly, because I sold those fifty thousand in literally twenty seven hours, and the vendor said, "Oh man, you want to do some more?" And before that, you bought from China, you had to pay for it all. That's the reason why the pre sales were there, and that's the reason why they did it that way was because of the fact that you had to pay for everything up front before they would ever put it on a boat. And this was the first time anybody had ever put something on a boat before it was paid for. And so for about a year, year and a half, I was the, I was the only one doing it. And uh, wow, I, it went so big, so fast. It was a little overwhelming. But, uh, uh, but then uh, a couple of other vendor, uh, vendors came along and everything. And, and there was, at the time, it, it seemed a little tight to have two or three vendors, but really fast and really quickly it got to the point to where there was room for four or five six vendors and and for people to make a living you know what i mean and and be able to do it so that that's that's the way the whole thing started and so i don't think a lot of the newer people you know honestly uh realize that before i and we it was an rgb man by the way that was actually that was actually a name and a logo that was done as a joke by somebody in the think tank and I just kept it and said, okay, let's do that. <laughs> we just and we just did it. So so basically that's how the that's how the whole thing started. And you know what? It's made me happy that that even though there's so many vendors now and, and it's so spread out and whatnot, it's made me happy that that price point has stayed. And that price point has been here and it's allowed and, and that price point has allowed thousands of people. That wouldn't normally have ever done this because stuff was so expensive to to maybe get into something that they've enjoyed for a few years. And that that makes me happy. Sure. So let's let's talk about the negativity out there. Sure. Uh, it's sometimes it feels like it's a almost a weekly basis. Someone's going to post 
Has anyone heard from RGV, man? Right, I right. tried to contact him. And then some of the snarkiest, ugliest comments come out. And as we talked earlier, some of them may be warranted and some oh. of them aren't. So tell us. Absolutely. <laughs> what, how you feel about that, what you're doing about that, and, and okay. what's your approach on this? Okay. Uh, honestly, uh, I have no problem with somebody being snarky if, if for some reason something happened and I did not respond and did not do what needed to be done. And that did happen uh, a couple of years ago. COVID, everybody was spending money like crazy. Uh, I sold a ton of pixels that year to individuals. And and that was the year that a bad batch had come out of China, out of that factory with the with the uh, 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 with the epoxy. And uh, honestly, uh, I was trying to you know I was trying to work it, trying to work it, but I was just a single person doing it, and it just became so overwhelming that I shut down. Pure and simple. I mean, there's no, there's nothing else to it. I, I shut down and there were some people had some problems that year and that was, and the light problems were my fault, period. I've spent the last couple of years trying to rectify that. You know, when somebody contacts me and says, hey, you know, I had some lights that were this and this and this and, and, you know, not onesies and twosies because that's normal. You know, that's a normal failure rate. But when somebody had uh, a string that went out and then another would go out on it and then another would go out on it, I'm trying to rectify that, you know, and I'm not advertising it hugely or anything. But as people have asked, I've gone back to China and I've worked with them and sometimes they pay for it and sometimes they don't and I pay for it. So, I mean, it's it's not that big of a thing. I will say this uh, unequivocally. I really stink at email, uh, not writing it, not understanding it. It's just that sometimes I'm just tired. Like I had surgery a couple of months ago. Uh, and you know what? It was just the last thing on my mind. And in all honesty, I'm not going to give you an excuse for that. It's just, you know, sometimes I get really bad at it and then I try to go back and do it. But, you know, yes, yeah, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it is hard to get a hold of me. Sometimes it is. Okay. Now you can, by the way, if you find me on Facebook uh, I, and you want to send me a message, I try to check the message requests. So if for some reason you haven't heard from me in email, that's okay. You know, try and find me personally on, on because I try to keep everything in just two places. So in other words, I, if I'm going to answer people on email or if I'm going to answer them just on my personal uh, on my personal Facebook account, that way I'm not spread out with this email, that email address, this email address, that email address. Oh, this the messages on this board, that board. So so I try to keep it honed down to where to where when I'm really checking, I'm not having to go to 17 different places to try and check to see what somebody's asking. If that makes any sense. No, it does. Uh, I have to tell you, it, it bothers me a bit when people become very snarky. I've actually had to tell people tell me, you know, Ron, if you're going to be affiliated with RGB, man, I don't know if I can be affiliated with you. And it sort of chaffs my hide because I don't think people have the full story. And there's always some drama in the hobby, but we've talked. And so some people have complained about pixels with you or communication, right. but they've never purchased anything from you. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've had a few people kicked out of a couple of groups because they just keep going on and on about, about how I cheated them and everything. And yet when I write them and ask them, uh, they won't give me an order number. They, I, there's no, their name doesn't show up in anything in the store or my spreadsheets or anything else. And after I've asked them two or three times, I kind of go, oh, okay, and I might report them. Sometimes I don't even report them. I'm not a, I'm not super aggressive. You know, I, I really am not. I just want people to enjoy the hobby. And if I can help out in some way of that, that's fine. And I, I've, even you've written me sometimes going, hey, somebody is saying something over here. Why don't you go over and say something? I just don't do it because to me, when I get on there and do it, it's, it's throwing gas on the fire. And, and, uh, you know, I may go look at it and if it feels appropriate, then I might say something, but most of the time I don't just because, because, you know, you and I both know <laughs> it being in groups this long. Cause when I first started on Facebook, there was two groups for RGB and one had 20 people in it and the other one had 10. <laughs> so, uh, there wasn't a whole lot there to be honest with you. And the one thing I never wanted this hobby to become was, the light of Rama forums, 
where people were mean and to each other and people looked at new people and and said nasty things to them and and when it started to kind of get that way with a lot of the groups i kind of started to pull out a little bit because honestly i like the one-on-one interaction when i was a teacher uh, I was invited for two years to go do uh, special things for youth. And and I went and did those things because I thought, oh, this is going to be how my how I'm going to really feel great about my teaching career and everything was these things where they come up afterwards and tell me how great I was. And and after after doing it for a year and a half, I quit. And I, I literally said to my wife, I said, you know what? I didn't realize that the interaction every day with the kids in my class that I saw every day was a million times more than that. And so I enjoy talking to somebody on the phone about the, about the hobby. And I enjoy giving my opinion because I'm not always right. but I at least <laughs> have an opinion and uh, on what they should do with their show, not being there and not seeing it. So, you know, really for me, I love watching people enjoy the, the hobby and, and I like to be a help when I can. I appreciate that. I think, a lot of people today as vendors, whether they're Coro vendors, well, I would say more so pixel vendors and controller vendors have put themselves in a position of uh, inclusion. Uh, they go to all the minis, they go to all the events. Yeah. They are very responsive. They're looking for anything, any opportunity to participate in a discussion because it is a form of advertising. Right, right. Anytime your name gets out there, it's like, oh, look who said something. Ah, oh, that's right. Yeah. I need to get some pixels for that person. I, I just realized. No, I, that is absolutely true. <laughs> but you don't do that. So my question is, yeah. to maintain the business at a certain level and to maintain, uh, to be relevant in the hobby today, do you feel like you're doing enough or is it going back to what you just said you, you sort of checked out because you've been in it a while the snarkiness and, and and the hobbies change in such a way that it's difficult for you to throw yourself back into the communities and and actually the community i throw that i usually throw myself is is local uh you know uh, uh my friend jordan ash and i we we run a thing the mini here and we really enjoy doing that. We uh, we have a local group, you know, and we talk and we're, we're setting stuff up for that. But uh, honestly, there's a difference between marketing and there's a difference between marketing. Some, so I know some people are very, very aggressive. And when I was really being aggressive with it, I didn't like myself. And the reason being is, is because I had to go against other people. Uh, you know, like like I talked about the people that were never customers that were seemed to decide that for some reason it was their job, you know, to act like one and 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 say things that weren't true. And like I said, if if I if somebody has a problem with me and they're a customer of mine and I haven't rectified it, I'm not given an excuse that I didn't do it. And, you know, and, and I would like to try and rectify it for them. And I have, like I said, over the last couple of years done that. But uh, but in all reality, uh, the groups to me, have, I enjoy them. And I there's a lot of camaraderie in them, which I think is really neat. But I'm not a partier. I'm 62 years old. I'm not a partier. In other words, I'm not going to go out to bars with people, you know, after something or something of that nature. In fact, when I traveled 45 weeks after the year after my teaching career and did training for software and traveled for years, a few years uh, on my own doing it, uh, when I went to the shows like NAB, National Association of Broadcasters and other large ones like the one in Amsterdam, you never saw me in the bars afterwards. I, I, I've never been that type of person. I've always been the kind that want to go home and call my wife and talk to my wife and kids. Now my kids are old, so I can talk to them anytime. So you're but, saying there's life outside of life. Yeah, there's life outside. <laughs> but but I, I, I think that I think you I think you're proving a point. It, it, outside of going to these events, mm -hmm. even just creating posts and responding to posts, you're not really doing that these days. Uh, like you were and maybe right. local maybe locally here I, and i totally get that it's easier and you know everybody oh, yeah. here and i can see them one-on-one -on -one. you know right. i love the one-on-one -on -one interaction or even a small group when you're literally there together right that's kind of a fun thing but you know ron if you remember 
in all honesty, when when you suggested Vinny for me to come onto the think tank and be an administrator, I didn't post that much. No. This is what's funny is I never posted that much in X Lights or Think Tank or anywhere else. I never posted that much. And to tell you the truth, me, I I, I have probably cut my posting 50%, which means I post once or twice a year. <laughs> I mean, I really never posted that much, even when I was an ad man. I was kind of just always been kind of a behind the scenes type guy. And, uh, and so, you know, it, but it's funny because the people look at, the way I do things and they think there's always an alternative motive behind it. I always get a big kick when I see the laughing emoji, when I put something up, uh, I get a big kick when it wasn't funny. I just get a big kick about it because, you know, I think, I think, wow, that person really is just hating the fact that I don't allow commenting on my page because I don't want to answer things there. And I don't want to deal with jerks there. You know, people that aren't customers that try to cause trouble. Uh, I, like I said, personal, per, personal and that email. And sometimes like somebody did say, oh, I've been trying to get a hold of you for a few weeks. Well, it was right after my shoulder surgery I just had. And typing wasn't one of my favorite things to do. Sure. You know, so it's always been kind of my son helps me and that's it. It's never been a thing to where I want to go to a big, I want to be in a warehouse and I want to, you know, have all this stuff and everything else. It's never been that. It's always been about the hobby and, and how I can, you know, hopefully help the hobby and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's really, that's really about it. I, I'm pretty, I'm not a simple person. I think things through, don't get me wrong, but, uh, but yeah, half the time when people, when people talk about motives, in fact, uh, somebody said, oh, he's ignoring RGB man because he's trying to start this other company. Yeah, I do have another company, uh, but they both get equal, <laughs> they both basically get equal attention from me. Uh, so it's really not that big a thing. You know, I sell to a lot of drive through shows. And so the need, you know, the need for me to sit there and try to, you know, I do sponsor a lot of shows. I've never turned anybody down for for a mini that's asked for sponsorship. I've always done that. So uh, uh, but uh, this year we've kind of consolidated what what we're doing and in, in doing that just because, like I said, the last couple of months have been slow for everybody. So uh, you got to be careful, you know, and just make sure that that uh, I know you get excited sometimes and start spending the big bucks. And then all of a sudden it comes back to, well, you know, bite you in the big butt. <laughs> yeah, and, and unlike sequencers. I have physical inventory. <laughs> I'm sure I don't know what you're talking about, Michael. My cost of goods sold might be a little less than yours. Yes, it's just just a little. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I think we uh, have an appointment to go hang out with uh, Jordan and Richard. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, we do. And then uh, my my hands are uh, my fate is in are in your hands and the other group we're hanging out with tonight. But yeah. I want to thank you for uh, answering the questions. No I know worries. they're not always easy questions, and I look forward to getting this out to people and uh, so we can hear some more snarky comments. Yep, right on. 